In this video, I'll be showing you how to make an aim trainer inside of Unity. I'm going to try to make this video as short as possible, but cover everything that you need to know. Um, for my UI, uh, inside my canvas, I have four labels. One for the timer, the targets that I hit, the targets that I miss, um, as well as the accuracy. And then I have a slider. Um, it's called accuracy slider. Make sure if you are using the slider, you come down here um, to the whole numbers. Make sure that that is selected um and then the minimum value is zero and then the maximum value is 100 um and actually the whole numbers is really up to you if you want it you can enable it if not then disable it um and then i have three panels uh bad medium and good and then they're all just different colors um red yellow and green um so down below inside of your assets or wherever your assets is i have three folders well four folders a folder called prefab um, a folder for the scenes a folder for the scripts and then folder for text mesh pro because you will need this um, inside of your prefab folder um, just open it up and then back in your hierarchy we're just going to right click come over to 3d object and click on sphere uh, we will name this target and then on the transform we're just going to right click and reset it um, so now whenever we look at the game it should be like almost in the center um, so now that we have this we're just going to drag our target into our prefab folder and then delete it from our hierarchy now you can go back to your assets and inside of your scripts and inside of your scripts, you will need three scripts, uh, one for your target, a timer, as well as one for the actual trainer. Um, once you have these created, go ahead and open up the trainer one first. And here we will start making a few references to things that we will need. Um, the first one will be the public game object for the target prefab. So we'll just name this target prefab. Um, the next one will be an actual instance for the script since we will be needing access to the script later on there we do public static trainer not that public static trainer and we'll just name this instance um then we will need a public static bool um and we'll name this game over um then we'll need a public static int um, and this will be for the targets hit uh, by default we're just going to make this equal to one because we will need to do some math later on to actually get the accuracy and by default it is set to zero and since we cannot divide by zero we're just going to have it equal to one um, and then we will need a targets missed which will be equal to one and then accuracy as well um and then after we have that we will just make a public slider um if you do not have the slider you can just hover over it show potential fixes and it is unity engine.ui and we will name this accuracy slider um and then another thing we will actually need up here is using tm pro um, this will be so we can get access to the labels. Um, so we'll do public text mesh pro GI and we'll do targets. Uh, what's our hit first? Targets hit label, targets missed label, and then accuracy label. Um, and inside of our start function now, we will create a function called spawn targets. Um, you won't have this yet because we did not create it, so it's okay if you see the error. Um, we will make our game, not game object, our game over bool equal to false since when we start it, we want the game to be not over. Um, and then we'll make sure that the instance is equal to this. This way we can actually access the script um, from other scripts. Um, now instead of our Let's do our spawn target. So public void spawn targets. Inside of here, we will create a new vector three, and we will just name this 
random spawn. Um, and this will be equal to a new vector theory. Um, and we're just going to give random ranges. Um, keep in mind that these ranges will be completely based on what you set. Um, and then this, when I'm setting here, is just what fits my game in a sense. Um, so you would definitely need to mess around with it and find what works best for your actual game. Um, so this is all we're doing, is setting a random range for the X, a constant range for the Y, and then a random range for the Z. Um, and then we will also need to instantiate the target prefab. So this is loading it into the scene. Um, and it's saying where we will need to load it in. We will load it in at a random spawn point. Um, but we also make sure that we're using the quaternion.identity. And then I'm pretty sure this is all that we need for... Actually, no. Um, we need one more major function so we can actually calculate the targets that we hit, missed, as well as our accuracy. Um, so we would do targets hit label dot text is equal to the targets hit. And then plus targets hit, which is the int that we created above. Um, the targets missed label dot text equal targets missed plus targets missed. Um, and then the accuracy label dot text is equal to accuracy plus accuracy slider dot value plus percentage. Um, and then we need the actual math to calculate what the actual accuracy is. So this is where I said where we couldn't divide by zero. Um, this is where that comes in play. So for the sum, um, we'll do targets hit plus targets missed, um, and then the accuracy slider dot value will equal the targets that we hit, um, and then we'll just multiply that by 100, and then divide it by the sum. And then this is how we will get our accuracy, and that is all that we need. Um, so we'll do our target script next. Um, Inside of our actual target script, I don't, yeah, no, we don't need anything at the top since this is just our target. Um, first thing we need is a start function, and we will start a coroutine for a function that we do not have yet, but we would just name this future function destroy, well, not destroy function, destroy target. Okay. Um, and now we can create the function destroy target. So I enumerator destroy target. Uh, the enumerator is basically like a timer. You can run it on a loop or however you want to. Um, so the first part of it is yield return new wait for seconds. Um, and this is how long we will wait before a new target is spawned and the current one is destroyed. So after two seconds, the current one that is in the scene will go away and then a new one will come up. Um, and then we'll do trainer.targets missed is equal to trainer.targets missed plus one. So since we miss a target, um, or, yeah, so if we miss a target, or if it just goes away by itself, um, then the amount of targets that we missed will increase. Um, and then if the trainer.gameOver is false, so if the game is still going, then we want to spawn a, another target. However, we still want to destroy the current one. Um, and now, to actually add points, if we hit a target, we'll do on mouse down, and we'll do trainer dot 
targets hit is equal to trainer targets hit plus one. Um, and then we will destroy object. Actually, no, just destroy game object. Um, and then again, we will check if trainer.game over is still active um, and not false. Trainer.instance.spawn targets. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all we need for the trainer. So our last part is inside of our timer. Um, up here, we will need TM Pro so we can actually display um, the amount of time that we have left. Um, so we'll do public text mesh pro ugi timer label and then we will create a public float for the timer so we're actually uh we don't need a static we'll do public float timer 10f um so again this is how long the game will last um so if you want the game to last for a minute then you know put 60 seconds and you know just keep it going from there um but again, for this tutorial, we'll only do 10 seconds. Um, we'll, we'll need a, a void to display the time. So private void display time. Um, and then we will passing in a float, um, which is display time. Um, and then inside of here, we'll need a float for the minutes as well as the seconds. The minutes will equal math f floor to init um and if, again this is all this is doing is returning the largest integer smaller to or equal to f and f is being the float um so floor to end and then we will do the display time divided by 60 and then the float seconds math f same concept as above um, displaying time, but instead of dividing it, we'll be getting the percentage of 60. And then the timer label that sex will equal to minutes and then seconds right next to it. Um, and then we will create a start function. Um, actually, not start, we want a update function. Um, and inside its update function, we'll do if the timer is greater than zero, then we will want the timer to count down from the, using the delta time. Um, and then we will do display time. And how we would be displaying it is from the timer. So we were displaying this amount. Um, However, if the timer is anything less than zero, then the trainer dot game over is true, and then the timer label dot text is equal to whatever it is. You can do this if you want to. Um, just do game over, I guess. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Actually, one more thing we will do for the trainer. Um, if you would like to restart the game, what we'll us do if game over is equal to true, um, and if in input dot get key down key code, we'll do r, not double r, r, um, and then up here using Unity not editor. UD engine dot scene management. We'll do scene manager dot load scene and we'll just pass in zero. Um now you could put your you know you could put a scene name in here if you want. So like whatever your scene name is. Um or you can just use the number that it's is assigned to your scene. Um and if you do not know what number is assigned to your scene. Um, just head back over to Unity. Um, let it load real quick. Click on File, Build Settings, and then just make sure you add open scenes. And then right here, you will see the number. And so in this case, mine is zero. So I'm just keeping zero. So if the game is over, 
and if I press R, then it will just restart the game. Um, and if you want your users to be able to restart the game whenever they want, then just remove this, and they'll be able to restart it whenever. But I'm just going to restart it whenever the game is over. Um, so now to actually assign things, um, inside your hierarchy, right click, create an empty game object, and we will name this trainer. Um, and then we're just going to right click again, create empty, and we'll name this timer. Um, on your timer, just drag your timer script onto it, and the timer label is that. And then on your trainer, same thing, drag your trainer, um, and we will need the prefab. So drag in the target prefab, the slider, the targets missed. No, that's targets hit. Targets hit. The targets missed. As well as the accuracy label. Um, now, on your target, make sure that you have the target script. Um, or again, you can uh, just drag it, just drag and drop it on. Um, and I believe that's all that we need. So, actually, timer. Timer label? Okay. Oh, wait, why do I have two? Okay. I have two timers and two trainers. I guess I wasn't paying attention and I added it before. Okay. So let me just re add this really quick. Slider, targets hit, targets missed, and then the accuracy. So yeah, one, tr one trainer, one timer. So now if we go ahead and start this. So if I miss it, my miss goes up. And then if I hit it, my accuracy goes up as well as my targets hit. And now you see my game is over. And if I press R to restart it, it goes back. However, I did notice that when I do restart it, my accuracy and everything does not go back down. Um, so let's do, after I restart it, we will do the targets hit will be equal to one, targets missed is equal to one, and then the accuracy we will not need to change since it is being updated every single frame. So we'll start this again. Let's go through. Now the game is over. I press restart. It goes back to one. And then my accuracy also went down. Um, that's pretty much it. Now you, you'll notice that my target is like some is going up here some is going all the way down here um again it's totally something that you just have to mess around with so if it's going all the way up here just lower the value for the, um you know for the y or the x or the z if it's going backwards um and that's pretty much all that there is for this video if you need any help with it or have any questions just comment down below and i will help you out when i can um as always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.